Okay, now we got 165 degrees here. I'm going to take the grains here from my red beer and steep them in this water for about 20 minutes. And since I'm brewing a red beer, I thought it would be appropriate to get a fat tire amber ale to go along with the occasion. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now that 20 minutes of steeping is done, we're going to put them right here in this little strainer. And I'm going to take some cold water. Pour it right through those grains and make sure we get all that flavor out of there. Just like that. Now we're going to add two of these liquid malt extract containers. Get that stirred in real good. Bring it back up to a boil. Dude, if you could smell this. Mm-mm. Coming along. Now I'm going to add these German Northern Brewer hot pellets. And I'll tell you what, these smell so good. Wow. Now just give that a good stir. See that green dissolving in there? Ooh, a house that smells like beer or something else. Tell you what. Now we're going to bring that to a boil here. And we're going to wait 40 minutes till I pitch the next batch of pellets. Hops, that is. All right, now I'm going to add these German Northern Brewer hop pellets and go another 20 minutes. Get them all. All right, so now I am running a wort chiller. What this is, is cold tubing. It comes from my garden hose. goes all the way up through here, over the dishes, through the tubing, back out of the tubing, and in the sink. This will chill the beer down to about 70 degrees from boiling point down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. About 10 minutes. Just stir it once in a while. You're done in no time. Now we're going to add the wort to the carboy. Try to do it without spillage. Now we're just going to fill the rest up with water to the five gallon mark line. Now we're going to just pitch in the beer yeast and give that a real good stir in there. Now we'll just put the lid on there, press it down real nice tight. Got to put some straps over here over the top. And now the airlock should be good to go. Wait for that to get active. And that, my friends, is the primary stage of making beer. Red ale. And that's how you know you've got a successful yeast pitch. The bubbler's active and we're good to go. So in six days, I'm going to change this out to a secondary. All right, here we are. This is seven days later. The bubbler's inactive. We got sediment in the bottom. You can see the headspace is cleared out. So now we need to rack this to a secondary. So now I'm running a siphon. It's pulling out all that beer out of that carboy and it's going into this bucket here, which we call a secondary. And what you end up with is all that sediment in the bottom of that carboy and you get five gallons of beer. Okay, so normally I wouldn't have to clean this one. I just use the second carboy, but it hasn't arrived yet. That's why I'm using the bucket. But I'm going from the bucket back into a clean carboy so it stays nice and sealed. And there we got it all sealed back up. Got the airlock back on. We're going to wait two weeks before we have to touch this again. Dark place and 70 degrees Fahrenheit is the best place for it. All right, here we are two weeks later. It's time to rack this beer off and put our priming sugar in. You can see there's sediment down there in the bottom. It needs to come off. We're going to put it in the new carboy right here. It's going to be awesome. So here's the priming sugar. It's not a big deal. You just add it to your water. Boiling water, that is. Wait that to melt down and simple syrup size. Okay, so now we've started siphoning over to the other secondary. Just going to pour in the priming sugar. 
and that'll start to fill up till we're full. And you can see there's that sediment left in the bottom. I tilt it back here so I can get all the beer I can. We're almost done here. Now it's important that you give that a real good stir. You don't want to introduce oxygen in there, but you do want that priming sugar to be evenly distributed in there before we bottle. That way every one of them can carbonate. Now there's two ways I like to bottle. You can go with the traditional bottles, or you can use a gallon carboy. I like to use these because I can put them in my little gallon kegger with a tap and run CO2 to pressurize it. Now we just fill them up. Well, it takes a few seconds for each one. Right to the top, pull out, start the next one. And this tip, spring loaded. So with pressure, it fills up. It's perfect. And the gallon carboys are just as easy to fill. Stop it right there. Move on to the next one. No problem. Now bottling this, just a cap. And it's got a nice seal in there. You just do it real tight. And this will carbonate in the next two weeks. Just a regular cap. Throw that on here. And this little thing, these are cheap. Just gotta make sure you're square and you can set it down. And that's it. And just like that, folks, I've got 24 bottles of beer and two and a half gallon carboys. That's a red beer. We'll try it in two weeks after it carbonates. Here we go. Listen for it. Hear that? Carbonation. Yeah, look at that head. And there you have it, a red ale right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen.